reported. Um, tonight we have uh, two main agenda items. We have the Rosemary Recreation Complex and we have the Public Safety Complex. Um, we will first start though with approving the minutes of the previous meeting. So do I hear a motion to approve the last meeting minutes? So moved. Okay, Second. Thank you, George. Um, any questions, concerns? Okay, great. And as we are open meeting and we are on Zoom, we will do a roll call. So Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. And Stuart and I, I don't see any other committee members. Roy, there's Roy. There's Roy, I see him. The glasses and everything. And Roy? Uh, I, I like it, I like it. I like the glasses too, that's cool. All right, that's the easy one. Okay, do we have everybody for the Rosemary mic that you need? Yeah, no, it's just, just me. <laughs> okay, so I'll just turn it over to you then for the uh, Rosemary Recreation Agenda item. Great, terrific. All right, I want to share my screen real quick here. Hold on, let me get you get back to where I was with this. I don't know why I can't get it up here, but we'll figure it out. Where is my screen? Where can I share this? Mm -hmm. Let me find this here. Should be down below where if you get it down yeah. there, it's a green share button. Yeah, I don't know why it's all, um, everything's minimized here and I don't know why. Hi, Natasha. Figure it out. Anyway, all right. Hold on a second here. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's see if it'll come up. Do you guys see that or no? No, not yet. No, okay. Hold on a second here. I go back to video. Oh, no, it took me off video. Uh, yeah, there we go. Right now, hold on a second. Here we go. Pushing buttons here. Um, all right. That one. I think that should do it. Will that come up? Did that come up? It's coming. It's coming. There it is. What do you know? Terrific. Got it. Very good. You have to shrink it though. Uh, uh, no, no, not that one. No, no, no. Take, take your, uh, click on the, uh, see where it the says Adobe export sign. on the right hand side. Or the little minus sign next to the, next to the hand. Minus sign next to the hand. Yeah, move your cursor up to the top of the menu. Just just a little bit to the left. You'll see a minus sign. I got mute. I got right there. Yes. Microphone speaker. You Look at that. Circle? I just I just highlighted it. Hold on, I'll do it again. You just highlighted. I didn't see. Oh, very good. All righty. Excellent. And then just over on the right hand side, get rid of the panel, the right panel. You'll see a little triangle on its side in the middle of the screen to the right, where it says convert to Microsoft Word, you'll see a little bit of an arrow. Natasha, you want to circle that one too? Yeah. Hey, I don't Steve, see can you run a training program for a Zoom, please? Yeah, yeah, that's what this was. <laughs> there you go. Oh, no wonder my, uh, no wonder I can't see it. All you guys are in my way. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, perfect. Yeah, all right, so let's, Got it's all it, yours, no. Mike. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So um, just a quick update. I know we talked about this back in September, I think. That was the last time I think I was on with with uh, Rosemary to have any um, pertinent discussions about things that were going on. So in order to do that, um, we'll go through this real quick. Uh, the building project dedication plaque was procured and installed. Uh, and it's and it's in the uh, just after the foyer area at the RRC, so that's in place. Um, we did the closeout uh, for the two-year conservation commission requirement uh, for Rosemary. The order conditions was completed, approved by the conservation commission on 10-8. That certificate of compliance was filed with the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds once we got it back from the conservation commission on 11-6. And, and e copies of the filing uh, 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 of the recorded document uh, has they've been returned from the registry of deeds. I'm waiting for the uh, actual um, uh, uh, permanent document, which which they said should come anytime now. It usually takes a month, so um, so that's been completed. 
Uh, now, the other thing we had talked about last time was uh, the design for that pressure reducing valve. Uh, George, you had asked as one of the questions, which I kept in my little notes here, uh, was, to, um, was to confirm what those uh, pressure ratings were for the water features. We did that with the raindrop, the pool um, feature supplier, uh, and uh, we got that pressure, which was around 25 PSI for the spray deck and uh, some of the other, um, and their other features. So uh, right now, as you know, we have a high pressure on that side that we, uh, that at the time uh, we wanted to leave that way. And we're finding now that um, that probably wasn't the best decision we needed to make. So uh, what's gonna happen here is um, we've had CA Crowley come in who was, uh, who was brought on um, from BH plus A. Uh, they also did all the, uh, all the mechanical here at uh, Memorial Park Fieldhouse. And he came over uh, beginning of uh, December. He went took a walk around with me. We showed him everything that was there. He reviewed the record drawings. He's doing a quick calc and gonna provide us a sketch this week. And uh, we've also moved forward and uh, spoken with n and Mechanical, that's the town's uh, plumbing contractor, and for them to do the install under their contract and uh, with any associated piping, and we'll do that at the, uh, in the mechanical room with this, where this comes in. As we said before, we have PRVs in on the systems at Rosemary. We have them uh, for all the domestic side of the water that's upstairs. Uh, in the offices, for the bathrooms, et cetera, the sinks. We also have them, um, uh, we have a smaller one downstairs for the, uh, for the um, uh, uh, smaller items down there, which is the plumbing for the, um, for the bathrooms and everything else. Again, this is only for the pool side, which is, uh, which is teed off down in the mechanical room. So uh, uh, the price we have for a quote from N&T is five thousand nine hundred ninety-four dollars. Uh, once we get the sketch, we'll confirm that that that, that matches what his quote was, because we've already met with him and brought him out to look at what we needed to do. Um, and that can be done as soon as this month. Once I get the sketch in place and we get it scheduled with um, with N and T. Uh, with any questions on on that? Yeah, that we have the funds for this yes okay i thought we were almost out of money on this project um we've got about sixty thousand left overall okay all so, right yeah more than i thought yeah so uh and then uh and then down below we've got some miscellaneous pool related items um that that occurred after uh, well some were repaired during warranty but then uh, uh, they were upgraded after that to uh, different items. And uh, I've met with uh, both um, the assistant town manager, uh, Katie King, and I've also met with um, uh, Stacy Mulroy over at the, uh, over at the, um, oh, over at Rosemary in the park and rec department and had some discussions with them. Some of these items, they were, uh, uh, the, they should be considered af after review as uh, being construction related. So um, there's a few things. And again, we talked about this back in September. We talked about the uh, probes that they put in versus the paddle wheel style flow meters. So that was the mag meters that they put in because they were having the issues with the, uh, with the sand, uh, with the hair, with the, um, uh, with the suntan uh, lotion and all that dunking up those paddle wheels. And they came in and put in mag meters after the fact. So those were upgraded. Uh, they also, um, they also did, um, uh, uh, they had, they're having problems with the CO2 regulators. So they replaced them once under warranty. And then I came back in and they were, uh, they had them put in um, uh, upgraded CO2 regulators. Uh, for the uh, for the pool filtration system, and so there was a cost for that. Uh, and then uh, the other one was um, uh, some uh, UV system bulb upgrades. Uh, the UV system is the last part of the uh, filtration uh, before it goes back out. So it goes through a UV uh, UV light system um, to 
to finalize the filtration. So the total cost for all those items was around almost sixteen thousand dollars. So we were uh, uh, we we were looking to take that onto the construction side, and uh, also uh, also um, I don't want to say transfer, but uh, as, as as I was corrected today with uh, with Catherine, it's it's basically a journal entry to um, transfer money. So uh, because that was paid under the park and rec budget, which really sh shouldn't have had to have been paid under that budget. So uh, the other item we have here uh, is shelving for FF&E after uh, going through the downstairs storage area and seeing everything that's in there, uh, both the health department and uh, the Rosemary Rec, uh, uh, well, well, the park and rec, they definitely need some additional shelving. The shelving that was bought for them were, was some wire shelves, uh, not big enough to handle some of the materials they have down there. Uh, and same thing with the um, same thing with the health department side. So uh, we're looking to get some you want to get them some U line shelves for downstairs and get that organized a little better. Right now it's um, it's it's not in the best best shape down there with all those. So uh, we're going to get a bunch of 24 inch wide shelves that are about six feet high, so they could uh, so they can organize and get stuff stacked on there that will hold that kind of weight. So. Um, they, they need about 16 shelves total down there. So uh, I'm pricing that out now. So that, that's, that's basically where we are. We have, uh, <clears throat> we have for action items uh, down below, we have a current invoice from Weston and Sampson for $1,260 uh, as again, as, as, as part of one of the system operations concerns. Um, they were, there's two surge tanks uh, at, uh, there's one at each pool, one in the lap pool and uh, one for the family pool. Uh, they were having trouble with the, uh, with the, um, I'll, I'll call it the float valve, but it's a, uh, it's a probe that um, tells them when that surge tank needs to be filled. And currently what's happening is, uh, they were having trouble with it. So they had replaced the probes and uh, then they started having trouble again with it. And it's not the probes. We found out from some investigation under this $1,260 that uh, we think the wiring needs to be upgraded, that, that conduit and all that sits in the water table. And so uh, we're concerned that um, we're getting some kind of short in it somewhere along the line. So, uh, so it's about 350 feet or more of, uh, of, um, of electrical wiring that needs to be pulled out and uh, replaced. We had Weston Sampson come in. Uh, I also met with the town electrician on it. We discussed what needed to be done. We're gonna upgrade the wire uh, in a PVC jacket and then um, pull the old one out, put the new one in and then um, reconnect everything. And from what I've been told through the pool operator, who is Devin Cashman, that works works for the Rosemary Rec Complex during the summer, and um, and uh, uh, he's been involved with this. He also said that uh, that uh, once this is done, this should be the last of the issues that they're having with the fill concerns uh, over there at the uh, at the pool. So, um, so we came in, we did the investigation that's been completed for $1,260. And then uh, we're, we've got a PO in place now for Weston Sampson to come back uh, and put in this, um, put in this new cable. Uh, we'll have the town electrician with us also to make sure that everything that's going in there is, is correct. We don't see any problems with it, but we wanted to make sure that, um, that, that I have his eyes on it too. So that that's another fifteen hundred dollars, and we should be, a, should be good. I have, a, I have a question about that. Um, is this something that we should have to pay for? No, no, because we're going to upgrade it. They under warranty they replaced the uh, all this other stuff that it worked, and then it stopped working, and it became intermittent. And they've done everything else. So now we're thinking it's just. It's the upgrade to the cable. The cable they put in was was uh, what was specified. So they did not put something in that wasn't specified. So 
until I pull the cable out, I can't tell you that it's something different. Right now, that's the last of that's the last of the troubleshoot. So, and it's all you know. It's it's, it's you know almost. Let's see, we opened the pool in 2018. So, I I guess I I'm concerned that these sound like items that are that shouldn't happen if the design was properly done. Um, are, are we is the designer aware of this? Oh yeah, BH plus A is involved in it, and 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 everything they had worked worked for the time being. If when it when it went out, they replaced it, and then after that, they came back and said, you know, I think at this point now, uh, if we have any other trouble, we should upgrade to this model rather than this model. And that's basically what this is. We're going from a, a, a we're going from a smaller gauge wire. Uh, to an 18 gauge wire where it's coming in a PVC jacket. So, it, you know, again, it's once you start operating the system and you're finding out what you're doing, you're trying to put it all together to, to, to basically get it to work. I mean, they've added a bunch of stuff to basically keep some of the stuff from, from having, having any other concerns. They've added solenoid valves, check valves in places that was all on them. So, uh, you know, uh, all on, all no on the design at this point, all on the designer, you're saying. No, all on Weston and Sampson who did the install. We didn't pay for it. OK, so so why aren't they paying for this? Because we had, because, we a, because these are upgrades for other items. Well, but the system doesn't is, isn't working. It's only been two years uh, and I, we and we're replacing systems. Yeah. What's that? George, I understand what you're saying, and 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 from my daily involvement down there, which I'm still involved daily down there uh, about things, I think that you know I wouldn't present I wouldn't be presenting these to the board if I thought it was something different. Uh, it, what they put in did work, and then they replaced it like they were supposed to, and then after that we said, you know something, something else needs to be done, and. And we said, let's upgrade this. Let's upgrade this to this. Let's upgrade this to that. If, if, if they didn't put in what was specified, then that would be a different story. I understand. I understand That's all of that. But I'm okay. simply saying, it's a shame that we have a pool that's it's within two years and we're replacing the wire, part of the wiring system because it doesn't appear that it was adequate for a, a 20 or 30 year life. It, it just, it bothers me a little bit. It's it's a three wire system for for fifteen hundred dollars for two guys to come in, plus the wire. It, I'm it's not all complaining about the dollars. Okay, that's that's not the issue. Okay, it's the issue that I don't think we should have to be paying for things like this at this early stage after we started the thing up. I, I have one other concern. I you know I'm not going to push this issue, but but it just seems like it's it's. It, there's something wrong with the system when we have to do this. But and anyway, the other thing that's more, I think, more important, in my opinion, is that we have a pool and a bunch of systems. Do we have people that really know how to I mean, when you when you walk away from that, I'm <laughs> and, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be there. I know you're diligent. You want to help them out. But when you walk away from that, do they have somebody to take care of this place? Do they have a system for it? Do they have people they're, that know how, what they're doing? During, Do they have a contract with somebody that knows? Yes, yes. They're going to use Weston and Sampson who did the install. They're going to, they're there on call. George, George, they go out and bid this out for on-call services and stuff and they only get Weston and Sampson. Nobody else comes in to bid it because I don't know, I don't know personally from my experience who else is qualified to do it. Probably the one guy, South Shore Gunite, who we uh, who we all know, South Shore Pool, who who was who was kind of nasty because he didn't get the job way back, you know, um, but but nobody else bids it. So we're you know so I they have a, the town has a contract with them to maintain this pool. To open and up. close the pool and then they use them for and and uh, then they've had an on-call contract with them if they need them to come in to do any emergency repairs. And that's part of their operating budget. Yes, and, it, and it's not cheap. 
Okay, so let me um, let me bring it back, George, for a second. Is that I, I I'm not sure I'm fully clear at this stage. We have an invoice to, to um, vote on, and then you have the fifteen hundred upgrade. Um, you have the sixteen thousand on item D. George asked a question about the budget. Is it, is this all within budget or? Yes, yes, yes. Do we have an updated budget just to? I do. I didn't. I. I I didn't get to finish it, so but but uh, yes, we're closing out uh, uh, BH plus A's final contract because, as you know, um, we had that forty-one thousand dollars that came back to us in a credit, right? From um, from VAV, who was the, for, the forty thousand credit. It was yes. a forty-one thousand yeah. dollar credit. Okay. Um, so way back, and so that came back. So. Um, so uh, we uh, we still owed um, BH plus A some final money. So they actually, which was in our budget. And uh, so they just deducted their their fee out of that credit because that was the best way to, uh, to have that credit go. It went to BH plus A and then came back to us. So. But in terms of a contingency, is there a rough number that you have? Yeah, it's like 60,000. Okay, perfect. Okay. Not, not counting not counting the things that we're paying tonight or or, or the ones you've listed as estimates. I, I, I don't find this is no, uh, this is all part of that. This is all part of that. We're so all after after everything has been talked about tonight, there's sixty thousand approximately that's in the contingency. No, there's about thirty thousand after that. Okay. All right. So when you take into consideration, we should get at least a, an accounting. Yes, you will. You will. My, my, my apologies. We've been, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I, I pulled this together here and I wanted to make sure you guys saw it. I wanted to get it sure. to you. Funny. I didn't. Sure. Okay. I, so, know. yeah, that's fine. Um, so at this stage of the game, I just want to close out the 1500 wiring and we're saying we have to pay that because of the upgrade. Correct. Okay. They feel it would, it, it should have worked in its normal course prior upgrade prior to the upgrade and it did and then it then it started working intermittently and so part of that investigation i'll go back a little bit part of the investigation was they said okay we think the wire might be broken but then they went and pulled the wire back and forth a little bit and said the wire's not broken because we can move it so we don't think that's the problem they thought you know i i had said when they thought something was broken i said whoa 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 wait a second here guys this worked fine over here. You replaced the probes, it worked fine. Now so we're getting intermittent. Let's investigate what's going on. So they came in, we had them rod, uh, rod the uh, rod the line uh, so that they could snake it to make sure that the, nothing was broken. And they assured me, because I was back and forth with them all day. Uh, and, and they said, no, no, we could pull the wire. We ran the snake in both directions, we're good. So now we think it's the wire because there's, there's water in the conduit and because that's where the water table is, we're down at that level. And so they're gonna, so, so they thought that by, uh, by doing that, back talk to their engineers, I talked to our, our so, electrician. And so we said, okay, let, let's, let's do this and that should fix it. Okay. Any questions from the rest of the committee before we go to vote? Erwin? What's the long-term uh, expectations from what we've discovered about these changes that had to be made? They're fine though. They, had, they didn't have any problems. As a matter of fact, last year, except for this auto fill, auto fill issue with the wiring, or, or 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 the probes that was their only problem last year. After all the other stuff was done, uh, after warranty, um, uh, they didn't have any concerns. And I got that straight from the from Devin Cashman, who was uh, uh, who's been running the pool, and also from Weston and Sampson, who's been servicing it. Thank you. Any other questions? I don't see any hands raised electronically or facials. Okay, great. So at this stage, Mike, we have first the invoice from Weston and Sampson. So I'm gonna put forth the uh, $1,260 invoice 
um, from Weston and Sampson for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Erwin. Any questions? And also folks, just from a question standpoint, I can see some faces, I can't see them all. So use the electronic panel to raise the hand if need be. Um, I don't see any questions or hear any, so I will go through the roll call vote. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. And Jean. Aye. Great, and Stuart, Chair, aye. Okay. Um, and so, Mike, we have to do the other, the 1580, or is that not up for? Yeah, I, I, I would do the 1500 for the PO that we have in place now. And that way, you know, we don't have to come back and then and then for the transfer of funds at 15,839. If we can do that, that would be great also. All right. So we'll take the 1500 uh, item first. That's for the electrical uh, wire upgrade um, for the sensor. So I put forth that for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. Any questions? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll go to the roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Jean. Aye. Stewart's and I. Okay. Now, Mike, you're asking us to take the 15, I don't have the full number in front of me. Um, yeah, fifteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Okay, eight thirty-nine. Okay, so you're asking for approval on that. Um, so yeah, I put... that's going to be a transfer. So, okay, so do we need to do an approval for that? I would. I... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I put forth the uh, the invoice for the fifteen thousand eight thirty-nine, which will be a transfer uh, pro step um, put forth for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, George. Any questions? Hearing none, seeing none coming to the roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Roy? Aye. Natasha? Aye. Jean? Aye. Stuart's and I as well. Okay. I think that's all three items. Mike, anything else? All right. Nope. Nope. I'll be back once we get the um, once we get the PRV installed and get that squared away. Don't okay. Okay. Thank you. We have, an, we have an estimate for a final closeout. Uh, date? Yeah, approximate. <laughs> I I probably say right after the first of the year. Great. Once this is completed, right. and we get the shovel. So that's two. That's two things we need next meeting, right? Which is um, which will be um, the eleventh of January is a on accounting just to close out the project budget. And then also, hopefully, we can close it out at the same time. That would be the goal. Okay, so that closes out the uh, Rosemary Recreation item. The agenda. Thank you all. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we're moving to the uh, public safety uh, agenda item, and I believe I'll turn that to. Um, where are you there? There you are, Ken. I can see your little icon right over there. Excellent. So it's up to you, Ken. You can take it away. Right. Okay. I, I just I just want to note before we before you start, Ken, is that the um, the sheet that I sent out of the invoices I forgot to enter the last um, PSS forty two, which is a credit of twenty two six six three fifty seven. So I think um, we would like to vote on that too. But if you could add it to your sheet. It's not on the list here, Catherine, is it? No, it's not. Okay, I so we'll have to, to add it. It just came in on, on um, well, it came in this morning, so I forgot okay, to add so it. Okay, so when we get to the voting items, we can just walk through that carefully? Okay, Ken can I've go got, through it. I've got, oh, it's not written on here, but I've got a note, yep. Stuart, for the, uh, when we get to that for the PSSs. Okay. Okay, uh, project update. We're... Uh, Pouring uh, footings, the uh, footing in the wall for the EOC room is complete. And we're now pouring uh, police department basement uh, footing walls. Uh, first wall pour is on Wednesday. We're probably about 75% around the perimeter with the footings and the walls are, are following up. 
at uh, Fire Station 2. Uh, they've, they're working on the under slab utilities. They finished those up. And then over the uh, next week and a half, they're looking to pour the slab on grade. They've got to do, do it in three distinct pours. There's some detail work for the steel erection, but that's mostly complete. The temporary heat is set up and is on. Uh, they're closing, doing their temporary close-ins. Uh, we're still on that original schedule for completion over there, October, November timeframe this year, and for police department uh, early next year. Does anybody have any questions on the schedule? Okay. Uh, can can nothing yeah. nothing going on uh, to impact the schedule regarding the uh, the work at the police department? Found nothing. Just moving right along, right? Correct. That's good news. Yeah, well, we were, we, you know, we, we expect, we were hoping that was the case. Um, just don't know. Now, we have not 100% excavated. We still have the, um, the Sally Port wing that we still need to excavate. Uh, but keeping our fingers crossed that there's, uh, there's nothing hideous under there. Okay. Uh, one of the items that I noted in the email, uh, and as you recall in our discussions for um, talking about the uh, the more the money we were going to need to cover COVID and uh, soils, et cetera, and we went back and looked uh, uh, looked at some some items, and these were the ones that sort of came up uh, that were I guess I'll call them scope changes that uh, would uh, either save money or there's, there's additional money needed to complete them. Uh, fire Station 2, the backlit signage, if you recall at Fire Station 1 over the fire station doors, we have uh, those signs are backlit, but there's issues with, the, when I say issues, the, the type of signage that we have requires some extensive transformers and electrical wiring and to install the sign as designed would require an additional fifty thousand uh, dollars. We just got in uh, an an option to go with gooseneck type lights, so rather than backlighting them, they'd be sort of a downlight uh, that would uh, um, light the from above and light the sign from above and in the front. Uh, the ceiling mounted bell, which we talked about over at Fire Station 2, uh, in order to mount that bell, it would be an ad of approximately 29000 At headquarters, we're looking at the sliding gate and arm in and out of the parking lots. Uh, PD's examining whether they want to go with that or make some changes to that. So once we uh, discuss it with them, we'll talk about a potential credit if there are any changes or it's eliminated or we just keep it as is and it's a zero sum game. Uh, we have the police carport it was redesigned to eliminate the ceiling and we're painting the underside of the deck and the steel white and that's a savings of approximately 23,000. Uh, the plaza has been modified to keep the memorial where it is and they work rework the sidewalk a little bit around it and that saves 35,000. And then the final item is, and Keith will be talking about this in a little bit, there's a uh, sort of an angled beam in the courtyard uh, plaza on the Chestnut Street side. And there are three options for that. Installing it as shown, which would result in an ad of approximately 65,000. Eliminating the lights and the backlit signage on the, on the, on the beam, that would result in an ad of approximately 35,000 or eliminating the beam altogether, moving the sign to the entry canopy that faces out onto the plaza, and that would result in a credit of approximately 5,000. When we last discussed, just in general terms, many of these changes, uh, the committee had uh, had asked that we come, come with these, these changes so they could get discussed whether there's a, a, a flavor to, uh, to go with these changes keep everything the way it is. Um, so that's what that's where we are. If you want to go back to the fire station two signage, 
Um, I'll take questions in, you know, sort of in order as we, as we discuss these items. I guess my question is on the signage is, was that, if it was as designed, why are we having to add 50K? Was that one of the uh, misses? I, I shouldn't say as, the, as, as shown on the drawings. Yeah. The drawings didn't have, uh, the electrical drawings especially didn't have all the details. And when we took the sign that they'd, uh, that had been specified, and we know this from Fire Station 2, excuse me, from headquarters, uh, it, it was it because of the details and the, the transformers and the fact that you're dealing with metal pan the metal panels, which is not cheap. Um, that's, where, that's where the number comes from, Stuart. Got it, got it. So I guess the, the question is how to, how to manage this discussion um, effectively. And I, I presume there's probably some questions here. Um, but first, it, do we need to act on anything? Are we, are we looking to make a decision tonight on these pieces? Uh, yeah, yes. Really what, really what we want to know is, are there any real volatile um, reasons not to do any of them? You know, does, does the committee want to, for example, if anyone's dead set, the committee's dead set on keeping the sign backlit, fine, we'll go that route, but we're going to have a $50,000 change order. Same with the bell. Etc. So unless there's some really outstanding objections to proceeding along these lines, then we'll just proceed along these lines and do the, uh, the change orders slash eliminate the need for the change orders accordingly. So I think maybe the best way to handle the conversation is, is to start the, the dialogue overall. Um, and I, I guess if the question would be is, Anybody feel that we need to act on the value engineering and remove this? Or do we stay as designed, um, knowing that some of these extra costs are simply because of, of what we anticipated for? Um, we owned it anyways, if it was designed, right? Um, but, but we have a chance to potentially take some stuff out. I, I think from my perspective, you know, there, there, there's one school of thought, which is it's, you know, in the short term, we might be making an easy decision to shave some money off, but from a long term, from a building, from aesthetics and everything else and expected for this town over the long haul, that stuff should be there. Because in five years time, somebody might look back and go, why have you got a, a, a light over the sign when the other headquarters is got a backlit, you know, it's inconsistent, but maybe it doesn't matter. So I think that's the way I'm gonna suggest the committee is if, um, get some opinion here in terms of, do we really need to go line by line or, or do we have an overall sense of, of direction? Stuart, if I can. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Um, some of these items are gonna require additional budget to complete. Mm -hmm. as intended. So that is the, the, the crux of the matter. This is not just a matter of following the original intent. It's adding dollars to the budget. And the the, you're saying that would increase the number that we're starting to target for the contingency. That's correct. Um, so we have you know, going through this value engineering process, we took another step back and started to look at, is it really necessary? And we're trying, you know, there's a difference of opinion on some of these items, whether they are necessary. Um, so I think it's a worthwhile effort to get the opinion of the committee. Do we really want to spend X number of dollars more to achieve what may have been the original intent. And do you have a summary of that number? Because you have each line item, some's an add, some's a negative, Ken? Uh, well, whatever, whatever these, the only one I don't have a number for is the, is the gate around. But if, if we can break it down into a little, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the plaza, for instance, the big change for the plaza is, is really the memorial is staying where it is as opposed to moving 20 feet or so. 
it really isn't a dynamic change to to what you see um outside of it like i said it's 20 the memorials in a 20 foot roughly difference some of the sidewalks are slightly different so that's not really a substantial change i don't know that there's there's that much discussion on that particular one i think i mean that's what i'm saying is at the overall and if i'm gonna I'll, i'll make a stab at it so if you have 50k well, it's 29, so call it 90 to round it off. You have 20, You have 80. 23 savings, so you take 90 minus uh, 23. 80. 80. It's, it's 80. 80. 80, thank you. Okay, so we're talking about 80 in overall. Is that what you're saying, George? Right. Yeah, 80, 80 minus 23. 23 is 57. Um, 30 35 is, is 22, and then depending on what option you take, for the courtyard beam, it could be um, adding 65, which would be 87, adding 35, which would be 57, or a credit of 5,000, which would be 22, a $22,000 add if I did my math right. So we're talking a potential of 150,000 additional, summing it up on the extreme if, side. No, if you did, if you did the, the, the 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 full the full ads if you did everything and you picked the most expensive uh ad for the for the courtyard uh 115 134 100 it would be about a seventy seven thousand dollar ad in total in total right yeah okay so i guess maybe you start there either you either you george you seem to have an opinion well, here well, I, I, I do. Um, I see you, Natasha. I, I'll get to you right I, after George. I, I certainly think that the bell should be in the in the building and added in. It was originally supposed to be there, and I think it should be there. I'm not as excited about backlighting if we can save money by not backlighting, but we still light it. I don't think you're going to find too many people uh, unhappy about that. Um, the next three items are all, um, uh, actually they're, yeah, the next three items are credits. And then the last item is the, the courtyard beam. That's, that's my thought. I'm not sure what I want to do with the courtyard beam, but, but it, I think the bell should be there and supported appropriately, of course. And, uh, and I'm not that excited about backlighting uh, for another $50,000 or whatever it's going to cost. Yeah. Okay, Natasha. I just want to un- understand. So the 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 what is what do we own right now? I mean, we we own a sign that's lit or that's not lit. We 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 own a sign that is that that is lit, yes, but it can't be done without these uh, without this extra money because the electrical drawings never carried the proper wiring and all. To, to backlight the sign that was specified. So we don't we don't own a lit sign. We own a sign, but we own a sign. We own a sign with some some of the electrical, but not all of it. Okay. So you, not, but you could light not, it without backlighting it for a lot so, less. So what's it going to cost to redesign to light it from another direction? Because it has to be lit. That's what that's what that's what this is. It, it, it will we we can Miles correct me if I'm well we don't. We don't have the actual final number because we just got the um, the pricing request for the gooseneck uh, at the end of the week. Right, but this so, is only for lighting. This is what's missing from the documents to backlight. Correct, correct. So there will be there will be some if we go away from the backlight, there will be some credit for the electrical that we do own. And then so you have be, to light it. So you have to right. redesign a lighting system that will light it from the front. And that's already been done. We have that PR. It's out for pricing now. So the Delta is 50000 Ken, Ken, can you hear me? This is Miles. Yep. Yep. Go ahead, Miles. Okay. Um, so I think to tie uh, both your guys' points together, we got that new PR Friday afternoon, which changes a lot of the work. Um, and to Ken's point, really the new pricing is just going to be nine new light fixtures that are going to come out at an angle and shine back on the building, which will light the signage. So really, to me, 
that cost is really going to be in the twenty thousand dollar neighborhood instead of fifty thousand dollar neighborhood. The the big problem that really hasn't been talked about is we would also be adding metal panels behind this backlit signage, which is going to be at least thirty thousand dollars out of the fifty thousand so dollars. It's the more than just the electrical. Money. So you're going to be paying the same amount of money than if you just if you, if you redesign it or if you continue in the way that it is with the additional electrical? No, the metal panel is only required if we stick with the backlit. If we don't go backlit, we don't need the metal panel anymore. Right. So, the okay. So, and the are there design fees for doing the change? No. No. So you'd be saving $50,000 if you... 30000 Yeah, because you got to net out the the... the, the Front lamp. If it's right, twenty thousand, you're 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 either spending twenty thousand or you're spending fifty thousand. Is what I hear. Okay. I say, I say front lighting looks good. <laughs> yeah. So where is the front lighting going to be? Is it on the ground level? No. No, it'll be it'll be sort of hung off the roof, if you will, or hung off the side of the building. Just think of a gooseneck lamp. Natasha. Yeah, they're hung about three feet above the sign and face down and point on the sign directly. So can you can you send us what that looks like? Because what if it looks like it's a restaurant and it's a police station? <laughs> I mean, is, is the is the repair um, for will it make it look, you know, like it's appropriate for the type of building it is? Keith, that's your well, I'm trying to get a picture of it. Well, we're, well and then okay. my other question was the plaza. Um, so with a memorial, the plaza has been modified, modified to help keep the memorial where it is, savings of approximately, can you just show us where, where it is? I mean, because if it's like right next to the building and it looks like a mistake, that's going to be a problem. And you know, well, you know where the memorial is now, it's out on the corner. Right. So, yeah, the original design had the memorial moving 20 feet closer to the building. And we were just able to redesign the plaza to keep it where it was and just generally shift some small um, sidewalks. It wasn't a big change. So right. Yeah, I just want to see what it looks like. Just to say, I mean, are you jam? You know, is it jammed in the corner now? And it, like, I don't know. I just, I, I'm just concerned that someone that we're going to say, sure, do all these things, and then all of a sudden it gets built, and then someone's going to say, who? You know, did anyone look at the design for this the thing? Other, it's in the, the middle other, of the corner. The and then concern, you're going to have to pay fifty thousand dollars to put it back where you had put it before. Well, the, well, the concern we, the other concern we have with the memorial is we really don't know what's under there. That's an no, allow. No, I don't blame you for it, but I think we should, if we're going to prove, you know, we should at least know what it looks like, so that when someone comes to us and says, "Why did did you ever think of moving it?" or you know. Well, I think I think um, to Natasha's point, though. Um, I have seen the layout. Keith, can you put it up? The, I can. Let me see if I, I can don't think they, I don't think if you weren't aware of where the original yeah, was, right. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't notice that we have reverted to moving it back to 20 feet from where the original drawings were. All right, can you guys see that? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so originally the, court, the um, memorial was maybe 20 feet left and we just extended that triangular portion. Can you, right there. can you just point out, just make sure that everybody's got their bearings straight. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this yeah. is the yep. this is the memorial right now. The original plans, it was shown right about so Chestnut here. Street is below okay. and, yep. and School Street's on the right. Yeah, Chestnut Street's here, School Street's right. All of these sidewalks stayed the same. The only change was in this general area right here, shifting some lights and adding this little part of the of the okay. walkway. That seems reasonable to me. I just wanted to make sure that we at least yeah. saw it because if you, you try to save money and then in the end, sometimes, you know. So while I have my screen, can I just go through the rest of these? Sure. sure. This is the gooseneck for fire station two. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically instead of, it would just basically be the same. We'd just be adding those nine lights. They're kind of slim and they'd be pointed down directly onto the light. So there wouldn't be any night lighting. Oh, and what what's the finish on them? I'd be a black anodized. Okay. But we can also, when we get the submittal, we can pick a color if that's something that you guys want to explore. We, we just want to make sure that it, it looks elegant and that it looks like it's a civic building and not necessarily a retail. Light. Consistent with the other buildings. Can you, can you um, go over what it looks like, um, what it would have looked like if we had done it the way we planned? It would look exactly like this, minus these nine lights right here. Everything else stayed exactly the same. What was the metal backing that was thirty thousand dollars? 
there wasn't metal backing. The issue is if we were gonna do the backlit lettering, the letters couldn't be supported by the brick themselves. So we would have had to replace the brick behind the signage with the metal panel so they'd be supported properly. And that's what was gonna add a lot of the cost. So this lets us not add the metal panel, keeps the original design intent and just puts exterior lighting instead of backlit lighting. Thank you. Erwin. And then while we're at it, if you wanna look them, this is the bell real quick. So this is, we kind of redesigned this corner so the bell would be installed in this area. So it does seem like a full, it's your decision, but it does seem like a very strong architectural feature we would like to keep. Yeah, there's history behind it. Yes, there oh, is. Yeah. So, and I can, I can show you the beam again real quick while we have this open. Okay. So this is what we own in the contract documents. This is the beam right here we're discussing. This is an aerial view and this, this triangular form um, kind of really was the thought to the whole plaza. So it does have a lot of basis and also frames this main entry, which people are gonna be taking off the public parking lot. And now the next two images are if the plaza, if the beam is gone, we move the signage up here. And these two walls just feel a little stark to us and this entrance gets lost. You also can't see the entrance. I thought you had a canopy all the way out so people knew how to enter the building. No, it was, it was open in between. So this is a, sorry. This was open air here. And the entryway is through there. Let's stay with this one and see if we can get consensus. Yeah, can we hold Steve for a second? Because I know Irwin's been waiting to ask a question. I'd rather get this question on the table. And I'm I'm raising the question to see whether we need to go line by line by line. So Irwin, why don't you go ahead and ask your question and then we'll- Yeah, just one quick question about the uh, lighting again. Am I correct that the uh, headquarters would have the backlit and fire station two would have the gooseneck lights? That's correct. So is there any, do we have any issue kind of aesthetically if one fire station looks different than the other? Is, well, one, I'm just one, asking. One concern we had, Erwin, was here at headquarters, um, we've got this sign, this sign that you're looking at now and then around the corner to the right on this picture facing School Street, it has Needham uh, need uh, need Police Department. And we, we looked at costs for that, but we felt that having the backlit signs that were already installed on fire, um, it didn't make sense not to have, have them here at, at, at headquarters. But we felt that where Fire Station 2 was somewhat remote and we had that, that uh, um, other sign in front, the, uh, what do you want to call it? The electronic the, street sign. The electronic street sign. Um, that, that also has fire station two on it, that it was different enough to begin with that it, it, re it really wasn't, it's not like they're right next to each other. I just wanted to kind of raise that for the committee uh, to make sure that wasn't going to be uh, problematic. Uh, I understand what you're saying, they're two, two distinctly different locations, but I just wanted to make sure we're, we're okay with that if we choose to go with the different kinds of lighting. All right, thanks, Steve. I, I th well, I, I think we ought to also, A, the, uh, the architect didn't think it was a problem. So I, I wanted to get his input because particularly this, this issue here, um, is an input that he has strong feelings about that we should maintain the um, the feature the way it's shown. Um, it would be nice to eliminate sixty five thousand dollars of I mean of, of cost, maybe even a savings of some money. But in this particular case, um, which what he's recommending is that we don't have any backlit, any lighting on the sign, which I think is appropriate. The sign is really there um, for entry into the EOC, into the police station coming from Summer Street, coming from the South. Um, so that- But that's the main entrance. Most people will be coming in through this entrance, right? 
Correct. But during the day, though, right? During the day. Right. Nighttime, the nighttime entrance. And we expect that there'll be traffic coming through the, uh, the front, too. People either approaching from the north or you can see right at the very bottom of this picture, there are three. These are three curb side uh, parking spaces that, you know, people, it's equidistant. People may go in under the beam or they may come in the front. But the, but the main parking lot is on the back of the building, right? So most people, if you have people coming in, they're going to mostly park back there if these are taken and they're going to come in and you have a, an entrance. Yep. That's the main entrance to the building, which is why we, I thought when we talked about it, that this entrance had a, a canopy that extended out so you could tell that it was the entrance of the building. And then we added this entrance over here, you know, um, because it was the more urban, um, this entrance over here is more urban. And I thought that at one point this had a canopy that extended out so that you knew that that was the entrance to the building. Because otherwise, if you, and then I don't know what the beam is doing except for just a spanning an area. I thought it was the canopy at one point. I thought that's what we had agreed upon. So now if you get rid of the beam, then you don't even know where the entrance of the building is from the majority of the population. Well, the sign would be up on the top of the building, right? That's, that's kind of our concern. I mean, we would ideally like to have it backlit and everything, but we saw when the price came in that chances are this beam was going away. And that's why we tried to do another option where we move the down lights, remove the backlit lettering and try to minimize the cost implication as much as possible. But we still feel it's a, it's a pretty important design element. So there's two, two comments, which is one is I do agree. I mean, it's, it's appropriate to leave it there, but can you do lighting somewhere down the road? Um, there's, and I mean, you don't really need lighting because during the day that people would be coming in there, the only time you'd light it or, or the even thinking about lighting is just simply to identify the building as people drive by at night. I mean, there is lighting under the canopy and all of these black um, sight walls all have LED strip lighting in them also. So there is sufficient lighting. The lighting is sufficient without those down lights. It would have been nice to have them, but it's, it's not going to be a dark corner still. It'll still be I'm thinking station. more in terms of the sign. I figured there was lighting around the sidewalks and stuff, but. Can you, can you light that up appropriately with spotlights from the ground? You might be aiming them directly into the office windows. I, we'd have to look into Yeah, you're right. That. You're right about that. Sorry about that. So I have a question. Is the canopy already built? No, not no. all of this stuff. They're only pouring footings on this part of the building right now. It's, so I'm just throwing this out there and I, I you know, is there a way of extending the canopy out a little bit so that you see where the entrance is and then putting it on the wall here just and not lighting it, but at least knowing that maybe, you know, I don't know. We can, without adding additional steel and the steel is gone back today, we can extend the canopy out. I think it was like 12 to 16 inches without adding any more supplemental steel, just kind of cantilevering it over. And we did show an option where the public safety was on that sign there. The issue again, if it's not backlit, we could probably do it. If it was backlit, it would have to be on the middle panel though. Is this one lit, the one over here? All, yes, that one is lit. The one on Chestnut Street is lit. And the one above Needham Fire Department is lit and the Needham Police Department sign will be lit also. So you can extend it 16 inches so that at least you'd see that the canopy extends a little out so people know how to enter the building? It's 12 to 16 inches. We can extend it some though, we've explored but beyond, that. beyond the face of this building right here? Yes. I mean, it looks, if, if you remove the beam, uh, the beam does, the beam is strange because it's a beam to hold a, a sign, not a beam to support a canopy or anything, right? But if you, so, but if you take it away, your front entrance looks like a back entrance, which was what we had argued about when, during design, right? But if it extends out a little bit and you can put some text here, you know, you can put the sign here, then it, it, it looks like an entrance. I, I don't know. I mean, is there is there a savings in doing that? Well, if you if you're going to extend the canopy out, you're going to take away some of the some of the savings we have in in removing the beam. The right, problem, you, you the problem an, yeah. Go ahead. The problem Sorry. with the beam is the the connections on the on the end, um, and the the associated brick lintels. Uh, it's it's just the, the the details the connection details are just a just a horror show. That's why even taking out the the lights and everything, 
still only cuts the cost in less than half because we still would have to deal with those connection details on either end. But if you got rid of that beam and you extended the canopy out so people could see where the front entrance was and you and you and you put some letters on this wall, would that be a saving still? I mean, because you're not doing the beam. It would it would be, it just wouldn't be as much. Where where are you looking to put the signage, uh, Natasha? Right, right here. See the blue line, Steve. Right there. Yeah. We're, if you put it on the building, I'm just I'm just throwing something out there. It's just if the beam is so complicated and it's just, I understand they're trying to highlight that entrance, but if they can do it with a canopy um, and, and, and put some side and put some light, I mean, I, I've always complained about the fact that the front entrance doesn't look as not prominent, you know? So the beam was just putting signage on it. And I, I know what you were trying to do, but if the canopy did it, and you got rid of the complication of the beam, and then you put some signage here. I don't know. Instead of putting it on the soffit, where he has it now. Yeah. Was that lit? Is this one lit? No, no. To that one there, that's not lit. That's not even in the design right now. That's a replacement for the signage the on beam. the beam. It. It also looks like the other canopy is a lighter color. <clears throat> is that correct? You have three different colors of metal panel? No, I think that's just the shadow you're seeing. It's the same color. I, I, I think this is too timid because you can't see where the entrance is. I think you, you have to do either the beam or you have to extend the canopy out and, and let people know how to enter the building. Otherwise, people are going to be confused and then walk up to the street and then go, you know, it's odd to have a main entrance of a building kind of hidden, tucked away. I, I don't like the sign that high. I just think you can, you don't see it. You're not sure what it means. So I think you gotta get a sign lower, but I like the idea what Natasha's saying. If you extend the canopy and use that back wall or that wall, um, like what you have on the head, fire headquarters side and the fire station two side, you're putting the letters on there. Um, I am. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I was going to just voice my opinion. Um, you know, I think the, the 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 sign at the angle like that draws you in from the two angles. So it, to me, it's it's appealing because I know where I'm going and everything else. If it's complex, you know, and you know, it's just you know, you, you see it from both places. Can you just position me where, where we are in the parking lot? Like what streets where? We are basically standing on Chestnut Street, street and okay. then School Street would be to our right. All right. Oh, but this is Chestnut Street, okay. This, yeah, so this is the front of the building. So where this tree is right here, that's the very front, that's the built entrance that you see when you drive by the building already. Okay. Well, then you really don't, if you're coming from the other direction, you don't really see the sign either way. Right, but these are the people that park, that are driving by or that park in the back of the building and are trying to enter the building. Okay. Well, yeah, my opinion is, yeah, I, 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 it, of the choices you're discussing, this looks better to me. Just voicing my opinion, it's just one voice. It, it fits with the whole design, right, Roy? It goes all the way from the, using the silver, the black letter and... Talking about the beam, adding, having the beam in Yeah. There. Yeah. So Roy likes that one. Others have comments. I don't know if, if any of the chiefs have a thought. Roy, Roy let me ask you, do you, like it, do you like it just with the sign on it or would you want it with all the uh, the bells and whistles with the lights and everything else? Well, you know, I I, I, I think that the lights, I mean, you know, look, it, it's dark at four o'clock for a portion of the year, so you want it to be lit. But if, if you can see it uh, from what you've said with the, the ambient light, I mean, you know, uh, it's hard for me to answer that question. Uh, you know, honestly, is the door going to be locked at five o'clock? Will people be using it? Are there nighttime events in there? That, so that, we're going to be using the meeting room. So they're going to be coming there for that. I, I, I don't know. That that door, my understanding from the way that they're talking, and, and uh, chiefs, correct me if I'm wrong, but that uh, that door will be locked at night, and the door off of Chestnut Street will be the door that will be open. Yeah, I, that'll be open. That side door will probably be open till eleven or midnight. 
Um, it's really on the midnight shift where we only have one person in dispatch. So they would then have to go to the, the front door off Chestnut. But that meeting room will be, you know, some public meeting space. So they will be used at night. Um, usually around 11 o'clock, they'd lock the door and uh, have the front access. So at night with the sign lit, that makes it uh, easier for people that have a, a community meeting or use the meeting room. They're going to be wanting to go through the public safety side there. And just yeah, to point I, I out, this, so. this canopy between the two buildings back here, I'm sorry, I think that has lighting also. So this thing that looks really dark right here will be lit at night. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying is if, if somebody says, hey, hey, we have our meeting at the public safety building, are they going to be looking for the public safety sign or are they going to be looking for the police sign? You know, for directions to get there. For people that are familiar with it, it won't matter. They'll, they'll, they'll know it. Well, That's both. the only reason to light the sign past four or five is if you're trying to give people directions of which door to use and go into. And the sign on the parking, where uh, the public parking is, there's a Needham Police Department backlit sign right above that parking lot. Right, but you walk around the corner. I mean, what we're not showing is when you walk around the corner and you're looking for the door, right? The experience of you make a right and then you have you're to- right at, When you make that corner, you're looking right at that door that's and, under the beam. And that divider is also a wall of glass. So the whole sliver between these two buildings is going to be lit up. That was kind of the main, the main goal of that side entry. I think I just asked the committee at this stage. Um, I think this is a, I'm trying to think of how best to facilitate. Um, we need we need an answer on this only because um, the the steel shops have just gone back. Sure, and sure, and I think we want to resolve it tonight. The question, Ken, is: Do we go line by line? Um, I think we do. I, I think if if the committee agrees, maybe what we do is we vote down each line item, um, or if there's more discussion, I don't know. If, Chief Condon, you have any comments relative? Yeah, to this? I, I'd like to weigh in a, a little bit on some of this stuff. Okay, please go um, ahead. As far as station two goes, uh, I think the bell is critical. Uh, otherwise you're gonna have this big window with the feature that was supposed to be there that, that isn't. Um, one of the things that does is bring in history in a modern building. So, um, it helps people understand that there, there are others who came before us and, and we're not forgetting them. So I, I, to me, the bell, I think, is, is an important feature in the building. Um, the backlit sign is, is, is definitely more aesthetically appealing than the uh, gooseneck overhangs. But I, I think between the two, if we had to live with one, I would much rather live with the the, the bell. Uh, ideally, I'd like to keep them both because um, after going through uh, 11 or 12 iterations of what the buildings are going to look like back in the design phase, um, you, you kind of have a picture in your head and you, you kind of want to see that go through. But um, that's as far as station two goes. As far as station one uh, or the public safety building, um, the door is a big issue. Right now, we're seeing people not knowing where to, how to get into the building. Uh, and part of that is simply the fact that the door, the current main door is right next to a, a construction site and people just don't seem to go down that far. But um, the beam, I think, looks good. Uh, you take away the beam, so the beam, fits in because it's sort of drawing the two entities, police and fire together in public safety. And uh, draw, doing that, I think, you know, when people are going to that public safety training room, that's, that's what they're gonna see, that's where it is. It's not in the police wing, it's not in the fire wing, it's in that common wing. And um, exterior view, that plaza has an awful lot of angles in it. In the building is rectangular with some squares. You take that away, you, you disrupt the plaza from the building. That, that pulls the two together. 
and I think it's important to keep that. Um, as far as the uh, the memorial, uh, it doesn't matter to me if that stays where it is on the corner or moves in. Um, I know our people would rather have it stay where it is because there's, again, some history there and a sentimental um, thing. They put that together. Um, that wasn't a town project. That was a you know, volunteer type project and, and people raise money for that and stuff. And, and they, the people who are involved in that um, were disappointed to hear that it was gonna move. So if that stays where it is, I, I think that's fine. Um, but th those, are, those are my thoughts about it. I, I, I think the bean, uh, for lack of a better term, looks cool, but it uh, really draws in uh, those angles in the plaza to a building that is very linear in, 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 in makes a, a seamless uh, transition between the two. Thanks. We also Others. should keep in mind that the design review board looked at this and ex accepted this particular design. If we change it, we will have to go back to design review board. And that's a good point. I don't know what kind of comments we're going to get back on that. They may feel like Natasha that moving the canopy uh, roof more than satisfies the need, but I, I don't know what the answer is. I agree with what the chief said. I think that the memorial, it's fine to keep it. It probably has sentimental value, but the other pieces seem like it's critical to the design of the project. And, and how can you walk into a, a police station or public safety and not have lighting in the signage to tell you to go in? I think it's a safety right. issue. Well, I think Keith explained that there is lighting at that entrance. But not on the sign. I mean, I don't know, I, to me, it's, it's a critical public safety building. It's brand new. And that seems like an, an important part of it, but that's my opinion. Erwin? <clears throat> I have a comment and a question. I've been thinking about the, just go back to fire station two for a moment. Uh, I don't particularly like the goosenecks. Uh, I think this, uh, fits more of a modern building. When I see the goosenecks, it reminds me of the CVS on Chestnut Street. Um, they have those lights in front. I think it should be, it should look like what you're looking at right now. As far as the beam, I, I do think aesthetically, it does look good. I just have a question. Uh, do we have to make, is there adequate lighting as if we keep the beam as you're showing, do we have to have any discussion about additional lighting or does it have sufficient lighting? It's just a question of whether the beam is there or not. I'd just like some clarification on that. The, qu the question is, you can get that, what you see there, you can get that um, for you know, an ad of $35,000. If you wanna get the lights with it, it's an ad of $65,000. I guess I'm asking, uh, uh, is it necessary to have, I like the design with, with the beam. My question is, is it really worth having the additional lighting? I wish there was some way to see this shown at night to get a sense of what it looks like without the additional lighting. Is, is there any plaza lighting, Keith? Yeah. There is plaza lighting. The, uh, the low walls have lights. There's some sporadic lights around as well. And the canopies have lighting also. So there is, there is lighting. The plaza won't be missing lighting. The sign at night not, might not read so well, but it's not a safety issue. The plaza will be lit appropriately. I, I think it would be nice if that were lit. I, uh... I, I'll tell you, you, you <laughs> um, I don't know how many of you have noted the backlit light signage that's at public safety now on Chestnut Street. But you go by it, you really don't even notice it. Um, and I realize that the point of this lighting is to guide anybody 
parking on School Street coming around the corner. But I believe the entry under the canopy, and I think Keith said it's a full glass height lit area, is obvious, an obvious entry point to the, uh, to the building. And uh, all the pathways do point into that direction, all, all paths and, lead and to the, that entrance. The, right, the globe lights on the pathway. Right. Erwin, did you get your question answered? Yeah, so I think uh, what I'm hearing is uh, I would be in favor of the beam. I don't think we have to put any additional lighting, backlighting the uh, Needham Public Safety on the beam. And uh, I, I don't like the idea of the goosenecks at Fire Station 2. So that's just my opinion. Richard? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would uh, also agree uh, with uh, with Irwin and also the chief. Uh, I'm um, I'm not uh, really happy with the, with the goosenecks either. Um, we spent a lot of time thinking about the uh, aesthetics of uh, of FS2. We we made the conscious decision to go with a contemporary design versus the uh, tried and true colonial design. We wanted a kind of a contemporary kind of with it look. I think we achieved that with the drawings as presented to us. I'm a little disappointed that uh, we didn't catch the issue of the uh, metal plates having to be uh, installed in order to, to support um, uh, the backlit signs. Uh, but I do think it is a critical element of the, of the design. And I, I would also note too that we have, now we have experience with uh, essentially uh, uh, two, well, one and a half buildings with that type of, uh, of uh, sign that I'm aware of. One is the public library. And of course, one is uh, the uh, uh, fire station number one, and soon uh, police station, uh, the police, soon the police station. So I think that, you know, for consistency, I think it's very important that we, uh, we try to strive for a, uh, a look that uh, that is uniform and, and, and I really wouldn't want to shortchange any part of the community. I, I don't think I would agree with the assessment that uh, Needham Heights is some kind of an outlying area. It's actually the gateway to the primary gateway to the town. And I think we should, uh, um, I think it's important that our, our public buildings showcase that fact. So for those reasons, I would um, strongly urge the committee to uh, to not adopt the uh, uh, the gooseneck uh, lighting. And I agree with the other comments with respect to uh, public safety. Thank you. Roy? Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, in fa I'm in favor of everything Richard just said. The only question I have is on the on this beam. Um, it's a backlit uh, is what the cost is this extra cost. Some of it. A uh, little, little under half, a little over half is all the connections on either end. And the so fact, what, that, the, so these weren't planned for originally. Yeah, there were there were no details to it. So the structural drawings, the brick drawings, the panel drawings, none of it was uh, carried uh, in the file sub bids. Okay, um, and are the other two signs backlit on this building? Is the police three, and yes. fire backlit? Yes, yeah, the other three are correct. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm spending. Normally, I want to save money, but I think these are critical projects. I would match have this match the other ones because I think it's it's the is the public entrance. This is the one we want people to know about. So while I'm in favor of saving the money on the on the on the memorial on the, on the memorial, um, I. I think we should go with the designs as we have. I don't know what that, I know that probably uh, Steve just makes everything harder because of the budget, um, but these are signature buildings. And what I believe most that Richard said is really important is that that fire station is the gateway to, to, to town. And that's gonna, that sets an impression for people arriving. So um, normally I don't wanna spend money, but I do wanna spend this. All right, um, any other comments? Chief Slittler, are you, anything from you? I agree. I, I think it's important that entrance is, um, you know, where 80% of the people are actually going to come in because uh, of the parking lot to the right of that building. So, you know, I think it's important that we have it done and it's done the right way and it looks similar to the other buildings. Okay. So can I, can I get a clarification of one thing? We're, we're essentially, sounds to me like uh, consensus is that we would backlit this Needham Public Safety sign on the beam, and we would also backlight the uh, sign at 
Fire Station 2. So what does that mean for a total dollar amount that we're looking for, Ken, to do uh, that? Roughly, uh, approximately 115000 between the two of them. Can we go back to the list before you? We, can you put the list back up, please? So I think what we, we should do, George, is, is look at each one and see. Um, this is where I make it a little complicated, but I think we, I think we need to vote in. We need to get a consensus on each line item and then have an overall vote is what I think might be the approach. Do you have it, Ken? Yeah, it's right in. Isn't it up? No, it's not no, we can't see it. No. Just want to make sure. What I figure we could do is just draw a line. What's the top end if we did everything? Um, okay, there we go. So. So we're if, talking about spending the fifty thousand plus for the backlit signage. Yes. Talk about the twenty nine thousand for the bell. Yes. The the gate we still have to determine that, but that's not going to be huge doll. That's going to be some kind of credit if we go without it. Uh, the carport, I don't think anyone's got a problem with that. So that's a twenty three thousand dollar credit. The plaza is a thirty five thousand dollar credit, and the courtyard beam is a sixty five thousand dollar ad. So we've got. 115, 144, 109. Plus 21 so far. 109, uh, about 88,000. About an $88,000 ad. For all these items. Uh, all these items ho, 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 wait, 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 hold on one second. So Erwin, you said 121. I just want to make sure we get the numbers. No, I'm just looking at page one. I was just in my head saying we're plus 21 before we get to the courtyard beam. Yeah, so I have basically. I mean, we all, we were we would owe twenty one, and then plus the courtyard. I'm just going to use a simple calculator. It's eighty six thousand. Eighty six. It's about eighty five, eighty six thousand dollar. Right. And, yeah. and and just to clarify one 86. more time, yep. it means we'd have a backlit sign at fire station two, a backlit beam, for the public safety entrance. Correct. Correct. Yes. And a, and, and a bell. So in, we're, we're basically, we're not changing the design elements that were, that were shown on the drawings, but we're, we're, in order to accomplish what it shows, we have to add money. Mm -hmm. 86,000, according to what we've got listed here. So that would be the number one, the courtyard beam would be number option number one, and then everything else above. The only thing we don't have is a sliding gate. So I'm going to, does anybody want to put forth a motion listing out those items that we want to go forth or would the committee prefer to go line by line? Let's put them all together. Okay. Do I hear a motion to? I move that we approve the additional 50 K Approximately for backlighting uh, fire station two, a 29K for mounting the bell back at fire station two, uh, accepting the credit for the carport and the memorial in the plaza with uh, some possible additional credit on the sliding gate arm and to spend the additional 65K or so for uh, the courtyard courtyard beam uh, with the back lighting uh, as such. Do I hear a second? Second it. Thank you, George. Any questions? Let me just float through the pictures. I see no heads nodding. I don't see anything on the electric panel. Okay. Um, hearing none, coming to the vote and a roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Roy? Aye. Natasha? Aye. Jean? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chief Littler? Aye. Stewart Chair? Aye. Okay. So that gets your answer, Ken, does it not? And mm -hmm. Steve? Yep. Yep. Gives me what I need. Okay. 
So with that said, is there anything else before we go to the voting items for the invoices and so uh, forth? Just a, just a quick review of the ACL. Okay. If anyone has any questions on it, it's uh, not um, uh, uh, too different. A few oddball ones at the end uh, that were different than what we had uh, previously, but not a lot of changes. Okay. And I presume um, come January 11th meeting, which is the next meeting, or the 25th, we will come back to the overall picture. We, we, we're not planning to do that until the February meeting so that we can get the January actuals uh, factored in. Um, we will have a budget review at, at the January meeting. Okay. But, uh, I don't want to uh, visit the important aspect of going to, you know, what we're going to be asking for in terms of uh, additional money from town meeting until at least the February meeting. Okay. All right. Um, Erwin, you have your hand up? Yeah, just quickly, uh, kind of related to what Steve was just talking about. Based on what we just decided, do we know if that is more or less in alignment with how the burn rate is going or no, that will it... well though de de depend depending on depending on what month you would put each one in uh but it would in it would if all other things were equal at the eighty thousand. now this month we didn't have eighty thousand. last month we didn't have eighty thousand. so you know so there's a there's a wash but all other things being equal it would increase it It's not going to help, Irwin. No, but my but if we if we were looking at a constant burn rate, and we have a couple of months where we're not seeing that kind of burn, then we have a little flexibility on the next month that would still keep us right. on that's track. What, that's what that's what I said. Is we haven't done it the past few months, but all other things being equal, it would increase it. If we were at that eighty thousand rate, it would increase it. Right. So, but we haven't had that the last two months. And I mean, I can't say what the next month you know, is gonna bring. Right, that's kind of what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we will come to the invoices. Um, yeah. Catherine and, and yeah. Ken, I'm gonna need a little bit of your help because yeah. I've got a spreadsheet here and I figured we'd group some of these. Uh, Ken, I think there's a change order that needs to go first, correct? Uh, uh, there, well, there are these three PSSs that are listed. And then okay. we also have the PSS 42, which is, Catherine, you got the, do you have the amount handy for PSS yeah. 42? Yes, it's uh, the credit is $22,663.57. Okay, but I'm gonna group that together in the, we need to do the, the change the order first, then we'll do the PSSs. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put forth the change order number 23 for $75,260 coming out of the general contracting budget. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Roy. Okay. Any questions? Erwin, your hand is still up. Is that still a question? Sorry, sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Just want to confirm. I'm having to live by the hands now. Um, I'm going to lower it. There you go. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, no questions. Hearing none. Seeing come. We can come to the roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Jean. Aye. Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schlittler. Aye. Great. Okay. Um, we have four PSSs that I will group together, suggest we group together <clears throat> to put forth for approval. Um, the first one is for PSS number 39, Castle Booths, artwork, printing, framing, installation, coming out of the architecture budget, $14,993.50. Second one is PSS number 40 for geotech and environmental. Also Castle Booths for $9,018.90. Third one is um, PSS number 41, train display case, $1,099. Also Castle Booths. And then the fourth one is a credit 
of $22,663.53. 57 uh, cents. Sorry, 57 cents. Thank you. What's that credit for? It's for money we didn't use for soils testing. Um, nothing to do with the soils problem at Fire Station 2. This was for uh, soils that were being removed and trucked off site from the excavations. Okay. And it was from PSS 16. Okay. Okay, great. Any other questions? Hearing none coming to the vote, roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Roy? Aye. Natasha? Aye. Jean? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chief Slutler? Aye. Chair, aye. Okay. Um, we have an invoice for from Consigli putting forth for approval requisition number 22 through November 2020 services for $1,007,854. And 72 cents from the general contracting budget. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, George. Any questions? Seeing none coming to a vote. Roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Jean. Aye. Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schliller. Aye. Chair is I. Okay. I have uh, five invoices for from Castle Booze coming out of the architecture budget. And the first one is November 2020 services for $35,752.94. Second one is November 2020 services for communications design services for $22,680.97. The third one is December 2020 artwork phase one, $14,993.50. Fourth one is December 2020 geotech environmental consulting services, $9,018.90. And the four, fifth one is the December 2020 train display case for $1,099. All coming out of the architecture budget. These are all related to the PSSs earlier. Any question uh, here to hear a second? Second. Second. Thank you, George. Any questions? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll come to the roll call. Richard? Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Roy? Aye. Natasha? Aye. Jean? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Chief Slittler? Aye. And the chair is aye. Okay, great. Um, we have some more to go here, folks. Um, three invoices for the FF&E budget uh, put forth for approval. First one is Wesco for dispatch consoles for $10,320.80. Uh, an invoice from Robert H. Lord, Lord for furniture. $2,365.25. And the last invoice for FF&E is the Robert H. Lloyd Lord furniture for $8,000. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Richard. Any questions? Hearing none, seeing none coming to a vote. Roll call, Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Gene. Aye. Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schlittler. Aye. You chairs, aye. Okay. Um, a single invoice from the um, technology budget. A from Harbor Networks. I put forth a software license bill for eighty-two dollars and fifty cents. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Roy. Any questions? Hearing none. Seeing none. Coming to a roll call. Richard. Aye. George? Aye. Erwin? Aye. Roy? Aye. Natasha? Aye. Jean? Aye. Chief Condon? Aye. Chief Littler? Aye. Great. And the chair is aye. Okay. Um, we have seven invoices for the final put forth. Um, these are from the miscellaneous budget. 
Uh, the first invoice is for pods um, from uh, 1126, basically November through December, $114.99. A second invoice for pods, same thing, um, slightly differently, but $114.99. A Milton Cat invoice for the December rental, $2,612.50. Um, a Needham Police uh, for cool School Street details, $667.50. Another invoice from Needham Police for police details on School Street um, for December for $890. And an invoice for UTS of Mass for October 15th to 29th materials testing. That's the fire station two, for $230. And then the last invoice in this group the miscellaneous budget is wrist frost shumway for commissioning services November 2020 for $1,276. All those invoices put forth for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Gene. Any questions? Hearing, seeing none, coming to a vote. Roll call. Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Gene. Aye. Chief Condon. Aye. Chief Schlittler. Aye. Chair is aye. Um, for the public safety, I believe that's all the invoices. Catherine, Ken? Yep. Yes. Okay. Anything else on the public safety? We do have one other voting item, but that's not to do with public safety. Okay. Last call. Great. Thank you, public safety team. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Happy holidays. Happy holiday. You too. Bye. Um, and be safe during the storm, the impending storm. Okay, just one voting item left. There are two, actually. Um, uh, there is, oh, I've only got one. One's the school master plan and one's Rosemary. We did Rosemary. Oh, okay. Then, yes, it's just the school plan. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, so I'm just gonna put forth the uh, school master plan study, the invoice for Doran Whittier for November services, $7,617.40. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Roy, thank you. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, hearing none, let's come to a vote. Roll call, Richard. Aye. George. Aye. Erwin. Aye. Roy. Aye. Natasha. Aye. Jean. Aye. Chair is I. Okay, I think that's all, Catherine, right, for invoices? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Okay, that's that's all the agenda items. Is there any open items before we close out? I don't have any. Okay, now in terms of meetings coming up, um, we have a big break, fortunately, I have to celebrate the holidays, is uh, January 11th is the next meeting. Is there any topics anybody has to, that we should put into the hopper now to, to the team? Guess not, that's fine. Thought we would ask. Okay, well, listen, everybody have a great holiday and, and certainly be safe on Wednesday, Thursday with this, uh, they're calling it the monster storm, the biggest in years. I'm, I hopefully it's <laughs> pipsqueak, but. I, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be a dud like the last one. <laughs> hey George, you couldn't ask for anything better, could you? It was the last one was supposed to be ten inches, and we got an inch. Well, I think a lot of people are happy about that, but hopefully everybody's well, safe. Okay. This one will be a lot lighter snow and fluffy, but fluffy. it could go south of us. They don't know yet. You come over and help me out, then. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Yeah, I like the stash too. I like the mustache too, beside the glasses. That is pretty cool. You you added that, huh? It's got the whole way. I, I, I had it. It was oh, long, yeah. and then I shaved it. Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad good. you got the glasses to fit the beard. That's yeah. Good. yeah. Hey, look on Amazon. If they're cheap, I buy them. They're readers. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, cool. guys. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks, guys. Happy holidays. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Take care.